In the news, Deadline reports Universal has acquired the rights to a holiday comedy movie starring Jessica Chastain and Octavia Spencer. So I'm pretty excited about this news, mostly because both Octavia Spencer and Jessica Chastain are incredible talents, and I can't wait to see what they do on screen together in a holiday comedy. Now, for more on the article, expand the description box below, and you'll find the link down there. But apparently the story, just to kind of sum it up, is they're trying to fight the elements to get home for Christmas. And to me, that sounds like a fantastic opportunity for comedy. If you're trying to deal with snow and everything else, and you, you just desperately want to get home to family, but you just have one thing after another causing chaos and causing comedy, I think that this could be a big, big holiday hit. Hopefully they release it actually during the holidays, because a lot of times, like what we just had this past year, Bad Mom's Christmas, Daddy's Home 2, these Christmas movies that are getting released in November like can we release the Christmas movies like closer to Christmas time like please going forward can we do that instead of Christmas movies before Thanksgiving but otherwise I'm definitely on board with this both of these girls are incredibly talented actors and I gotta say in Shape of Water Octavia Spencer was possibly one of the biggest highlights in the film because of just the levity she brought just being this natural believable character in this film and then you get the flip side when you get towards the end and you see all of the tension and drama at the very end like it's just she's so talented and i cannot wait to see both of these girls going toe to toe in a holiday comedy fighting the elements trying to get home for christmas i think this sounds like a slam dunk comment below in the comment section with your thoughts. Variety reports that MoviePass announced it will be co-acquiring films with movie distributors. If you are a faithful watcher of this show, you know that this guy right here talking to you loves his MoviePass. In fact, all of the films that have been reviewed on this channel so far this year have been due to my subscription to MoviePass. For those of you who are unaware, MoviePass is a monthly subscription service for going to see movies at the movie theater. You pay a one-time flat fee, and then you can go see one movie a day using your membership at any participating movie theater. It's quite glorious. So what does it mean that they're going to be co-acquiring films with film distributors? Well, it sounds like from the article, and again, if you wanna see this article, just like the last one, go ahead and expand the description box and you'll find the link for it down there, down below. But sounding from the article, it feels like they're going to be distributing films with film distributors as almost like a partner service. And if you're wondering, well, what does that mean? What does a film distributor do? What is the film distribution process? Let's go ahead and talk about it right now. So as you can see here on the screen, there's this lovely little graphic I found online. I put the link for this graphic in the description box below. So you can also go ahead and click on that and expand that, and it'll take you right to the website. And the website is actually detailing kind of how the process all works, but we're gonna just summarize it up for you right here in this new segment. So as you can see, it starts off with, you know, the producers making the films, the films go to the distributors, the distributors send it to the theaters, and then the customers come in and see these films, and then how all of the money trickles back to the producer. So what exactly does this image mean? So after a film is made, right? So after all of the actors have done their job and everything else, the film is completed and sent to the studio. The studio makes a licensing agreement with the distribution company. The distribution company determines how many copies of the film to make. And also the distribution company shows the movie to prospective buyers representing the theater chains. So then the buyers are gonna negotiate with the distribution company on which movies they wanna lease and the terms of the lease agreement. The movies are then sent to the theaters a few days before opening, and the theater shows those movies for a specific number of weeks, otherwise known as an engagement. And then as you know, we go see the films, we spend our hard-earned dollars and our time in the movies watching these films, and then the money goes back to everybody involved in making the film. And from my understanding, there's two types of agreements the distribution companies can go into. Now, if there's more, go ahead and sound off in the comments below with the additional steps. But as far as I'm aware, there's two specific types. One is leasing and one is profit sharing. So for the leasing agreement, the distribution company says, look, I'm just gonna pay a flat rate to go ahead and get the rights to actually put this film out in theaters. And then the theaters have to actually like place bids and stuff like that. And it's more involved on how they're actually gonna get the rights to show this film. And they deal directly with the distribution company there to try and help get this film out into the public so everybody can get their eyes on this film and spend their dollars on tickets and concessions. And profit sharing is exactly as it sounds. The distribution company makes a deal with the studio that says, look, we'll take you know a percentage of whatever it nets from anywhere from about 
10 to 50% according to this article in the show notes below. And then that's kind of what they do going forward with that. So now you might be wondering, why does MoviePass want to deal with a system like this? Why would they want to get into distribution or why would they want to partner with distribution companies? So by MoviePass jumping into distribution or jumping into partnerships with distribution companies, they have an opportunity to recoup some of what's being spent by their company for us to go see the films. And that is absolutely brilliant business. So we pay the monthly fee, we go see a movie, Movie Pass pays the theater, but then the theater has to turn around and pay the distribution company, which is partnered with Movie Pass. So Movie Pass is actually getting paid back for us going to see the movie that they just paid for us to see because of our monthly membership. This is genius. Also, this helps provide some sort of sustainability for the business model that MoviePass has. Because right now, if you're the type of person like I am, where you're seeing one, two, maybe three movies a week using MoviePass, MoviePass is not making any money on you. They're actually losing money on people like you and I. But that's the contract that they went into with us. However, with this distribution deal, with this partnership that they're looking to achieve, they can actually recoup some of the losses that they are incurring from people like us by getting the money back directly from the theaters for being able to show the films that we're using MoviePass to see. If this has not blown your mind yet, I don't know why. This is genius business. I love it. And I am so proud of MoviePass for coming up with this. So if you have not yet subscribed to MoviePass, I would recommend you absolutely consider doing so, especially if they're gonna be getting this distribution deal because that is is a signal that MoviePass might be around a lot longer than maybe people were projecting. They have found a creative, beneficial, useful, intelligent way to kind of help sustain their business model. And I am super happy because I love using my MoviePass. And I don't want MoviePass to go away anytime soon. All right, let's go ahead and move on to some honorable mentions now before my head just explodes with business excitement. Honorable mentions this week, John Wick 3 is bringing back director Chad Stileski. Toy Story 4 has tapped Stephanie Folsom to write the script. Danny Strong has been hired to script a remake of the classic musical Oliver. Ron Cephas has been cast as the wizard in DC's new Shazam movie. All right, and that pretty much wraps it up for the news this week. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching and discussing the news with us right here on Bernanski's vlog. If you enjoyed the news and you have any comments, feel free to just go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section below. Again, I do apologize because of the condensed nature of how distribution works. If some of you are in the movie business watching this and you're going, there is so much more involved that you didn't cover, you are absolutely right. This was just a condensed Reader's Digest version so everybody who may not know can understand. And again, for more information on it, go ahead and just expand that description box and you'll find the link below. Hi everyone, this is Jeremy Bernanski and you've just finished watching the movie news segment. Now, if you enjoyed that, you may want to check out the Certified Rad playlist, which covers something awesome and uplifting that we found. Or you may want to go ahead and check out the Special Segments playlist, which covers just a range and variety of topics that I want to dig a little deeper in, but we don't necessarily have time for on the weekly show. We will see you guys next Monday for a brand new episode of Bernanski's vlog right here on YouTube at 10 a.m. PST. Have a great week, everybody. Take care.